guys Tanisha and welcome back to another painting video. So as you can see by the title, today I'm back with a fun painting tutorial. So grab a snack or your painting supplies and let's get started. Alright, so since a lot of you really liked my last painting tutorial on how to paint surgical style bush, this time I want to show you guys how to paint grass in the same style. So I'll be using the Himi gouache set. You don't need that many colors. I will teach you how to create your own colors with what you have and let's get started with the materials. So for your brushes, you will need a flat brush. It could be squared or slightly rounded. It doesn't matter because we're going to add the background with it. And then you will need two pointed brush just to add some details and some finishing touch. And before starting out the painting, I want you guys to first observe the different pictures and understand the lights and shade, how it falls, understand what kind of color going to it. Just take some time off to clearly look at the scene and then you can get started with adding the colors. So I'm starting out by putting some white, yellow and green, although I'm going to show you how to make your own green. So we're going to add blue and also a little bit of brown as well. I am also adding some yellow oak in my palette just to show you guys how you can create different hues of green. So first of all, I want to show you how to make your own basic green. So you basically pick yellow and then mix it in the right consistency. So try not to put too much water or have the paint be too dry and mix it with some blue. So when you're first starting out, use your yellow and start dipping it blue until you get the right shade of green. You can also make green that's more on the blue side or the yellow side. It depends on what look that you're going for, but remember using yellow and blue will get you green. And talking about consistency, I'm trying to do a bunch of mixing on my palette so you guys can get a closer look on how I mix my paint. So as you can see, the paint has some water in it. It's not dried as a rock. It has some water mixed with it so you can easily blend the colors when painting on your paper. And going back onto my color theory, I just wanted to have a page separate to explain more precisely on the color. And I wanted to show you how to get different hues, tones of green. So going back to using yellow and blue, that will get you your green. And as you can see, I'm starting out with blue. So that's making it a darker side. So then I'll have to take some yellow and stop mixing it to get my green back. So as you can see, this is a green that's more on the blue side. And if I want to make the green lighter, I'll add some yellow to it. Speaking about lighter colors, so here I'm trying to explain visually what I'm talking about with using more yellow. So I'm using a dash of blue and then a lot more yellow to gain the lighter green that I was talking about. And this could be in varying amounts. So like I said, just try to play along with the colors, put some more yellow or more blue, and then see what kind of green you're looking for. So usually we use a lighter green for when we're trying to show the sun is hitting at a specific area of the grass. So we'll try to add more yellow to gain that before we start adding white. Let's start out with yellow so we can be more on a natural color side of the grass. Oh man, I know in my last video I say I <laughs> explain better for visuals so i hope i'm making sense because i do feel like i would ramble sometime but if that doesn't make sense just follow what i'm doing on the screen so now that we have a lighter green we want to be able to make it even lighter for maybe shun shun sun is shining brightly on the surface so now you can finally go into adding some white i don't think you can tell there's white on paper but i'm trying to show that now i have yellow white and blue to get an even different variant of light green here. So as you can see on paper, there's a slight difference between that middle green and the green on the right. So that's because I use white. Again, if you want to play around with the colors, now you can start adding white and see what kind of hue of green you want to get with it. All 
All right, now we're getting a little bit on the complex side. So you have three types of green right now, but I wanna show you how to make earthy green because when you look outside, you look anywhere, you just don't have like perfect looking green. Not that any green is not perfect, but you do tend to have green that's mixed a little bit with brown and that tend to make it look real or different or maybe in the shaded area. So yeah. Now that you have yellow and blue to get your green, you can touch a little bit on the brown and add it on to get a different hue of green. As you can see, it still is green, but there is a slight difference in it. And for my final example, I am adding the yellow oak to make a lighter green that's more on the brown side. I know there's a lot of words being thrown around, but again, follow my visual. And that's to show lighter green that's on the brown side and make it reflect on it. So I hope this made sense, but if it didn't, I have more studies to do so you guys can follow along with me. So now that we got our color theory down and have a basic idea how to get different variant of green for our grass, I wanted to use a scene from Studio Ghibli itself and kind of explain to you how I go about the process of looking at the scene and then how I decide to add the colors on paper. So looking at the corner, the bottom left corner, I could see there's some bluish tint to my green. So then I mix some yellow with more blue to be able to get that base layer first. And of course for the base layer, I am using our flat brush and it doesn't have to be detailed because it's in the background. And that's why when I say to use a flat brush, you can use it either a rounded one or like a squared one. You'll still get the same effect because it's in the background. And I think my camera cut out in between, but I did go a little bit with some yellow and mix it with the green to dab it on top because I wanna make the top lighter than the bottom because usually you have the sun on top and it's shining, so it makes the top brighter. So always remember your source of light while you're painting so that way you can decide on a side that the sun light would be hitting and then you keep making that brighter. So then now I'm going back with my pointed brush to start adding some details. And this grass that I'm looking at is a closer look to it. It's kind of like a mix of grass and the end of a bush. So it's closer so we can see the specific grass. What is that? Strands? <laughs> um, so I had to use my pointed brush to be able to get that details in it. So yeah, I use the same green I mix more yellow with it to start out and then I started sliding my pointed brush across to get the lighter version because it's being reflected in the light so it's gonna pop out more from the darker background I had and then I went back to add some white into that yellow and green color just to make an even brighter looking grass that pops out more. So then that's the only part that you will add the detail. The background, again, use your bigger brush and as you get more and more on top is when you decide to add more details. And where I'm deciding to add my details is using my pointed brush to add those thin strands of, of grass. I'm just gonna call it strand, but you can see what I'm doing on the screen. The fun thing about art, which I'm always trying to remind you to have fun while making art. I know sometimes you want to have a desired effect, but it doesn't happen. But let's just take our time to enjoy playing around with colors. So I had my basic teaching of having the base layer to be thick and then get more details with the pointed brush when you get on top. But when I was looking at this grass, I still felt like it was missing something. So then I decided to go back with my pointed brush this time and then add a darker layer with my pointed brush just to pull out some more strands and create some more details there. So you don't have to go to this level. You can always finish it up where I stopped it, but it's art. It's what you want to do with it. So I felt like I wanted to add these strands for it. So I mix a little bit of brew. brew. Wow, I was trying to say blue and brown. I mix blue and brown and then I was able to add that level of details there.
All right, we have one down and many more to go. I just wanted to give you a lot of example to follow so you have more knowledge on different type of grass you can paint. So I went first study going into it by explaining you how to do the more detailed version and now we're gonna learn how to paint grass kind of like a bit far but also not too far that way you can understand how you can paint grass on a hill for example here and just learn if it's a further distance how you're gonna play around with the colors to show some details of the grass but also not all of it so I'm using the scene from Kiki's Delivery Service and I really like this scene. It's just so pretty to me and it seemed fairly simple until it's not, of course, but I think I should be able to explain it. So as you can see in the picture, the one that's closest to us, which is the foreground, is darker. And usually when you think about perspective, that's how it usually goes. When it's closer to you, it will be usually darker, more detail. And as you go further, it gets lighter, wider kind of on the bluer side sometimes but we're looking at the hill that's closer to us so if you want it to be darker i will mix my yellow and blue more blue add some brown to be able to create that shade and as i go further i will use my flat brush to start blending it out by mixing some more yellow and keep going up and that is why i'm trying to show that the sun is hitting at an angle on the hill and it's more on the top of it. So that's why you see me starting to add some yellow, starting to add some white, and then just blending it with gouache. So if you remember my explanation before, you have to add some amount of water in it, but also not too much. And then you start blending it with the colors itself and make sure to clean your brush in between to be able to blend it. So it doesn't have to be perfect. You can still see some brush stroke in it. You'll go back and add some more details with your pointer brush later, but try to blend it a little bit and also look at the picture. And I know that the hue is actually looking a little bit different from the picture, but I will definitely go back and add some more blue to make it look more on the bluish side, which is what I'm seeing coming out from this picture. So I have mine more on the yellow side right now, but I could fix it by easily adding some white and blue, mixing it and be able to get that color. So there will be a lot of back and forth going on, which is fine. You have gouache, you have blendable color. And also, if you don't have gouache, if you have acrylic, you can have the same effect. You'll just have to work faster or use a retardant for it. And you should be able to work with that too. Okay, so now that I have my base layer in, I wanted to point out the section where there seems to be different hues. So you see some bluish green and then some whitish green. So after my base layer, I still have to go and add some more details. So I'm picking some blue and adding it with a little bit of the yellow and the white and then blending it in the area that I pointed out earlier in that scene. And as you can see, even for me, I have to go back and forth with my colors and keep adding different white amount or different blue amount to get what I'm looking for. So take your time with it in understanding what kind of hue you want with the color and yeah, just enjoy yourself while mixing the colors because this is what is the most fun part, mixing colors. So again, in several areas, I was seeing a more bluish green that was on the whiter side. So I'm kind of angling my flat brush so I'm able to get kind of like the starting of the grass brush stroke because you can see from the picture that the grass are all angled in a specific way diagonally. So I'm starting to now shape out the shape or direction of the grass. Not too many details yet because it's still kind of the middle layer that we're working on. Later, we'll add some more details, but using the flat brush and just changing the the angle with it helped me get various brush stroke with that effect that I want with it.
And as you can see, I am starting to make a darker green this time. So I'm using more of the blue and the brown to be able to get a darker green. You can use black, but if you can, try not to use black unless it's like a very, very dark area. But this one, I feel like I could make a darker green without having to use black. If you mix blue and brown, you should be able to get a darker color. But as you can see from the bottom corner side, it is darker. So I'm going back and adding darker layers, darker brush strokes of the grass and just blending in in the areas as I see in the picture. This time I am not speeding my painting process too much so you can kind of see me working in real time. So as you can see it's a slow process it's a lot of blending in so I'm adding the dark colors and if I want to blend the edges I will clean up my brush in the water and wipe it down and then slowly just blend the edges. I'm not making it too perfect I'm just blending it a little bit and then I'm using my opponent brush to kind of create that angle grass brush stroke just to get started with shaping out my grass again. <laughs> I'm finally done with the base layer and it's time to add details and as you can see the details usually mostly it's the part when I'm starting to add the lighter colors so as you can see I'm using a green that's lighter and then I'm mixing with some white to try to make it pop out of my base layer that I had so it's a slow process but I wanted to add some details there and and yeah, I will go back and forth to add more details and then change the hues if I feel like I need to add that. And as you can see, if I'm adding a lighter color on the dark side, it will pop out because you'll see the white against the dark. But as I go up, you can't tell much of a difference when I'm adding the strand. I will add some, but I will also go back and make darker green just to have some of those grass strands stand out as well. You could technically be done here but again I was having a lot of fun and I wanted to keep adding details so I wanted to go back and add some more details with the brush stroke of the grass so I kept going back and forth with adding the lighter color where I saw from the picture the sun was hitting on it but also adding some darker color to make some other strands stick out on the top layer because you can see in specific areas on the top you still had some darker spots for the grass so I was trying to basically add that section in there as well.
All right, for my next study, I wanted to go back to the first painting I was looking at, but now painting grass that's a little bit further away. So I am starting out by adding a darker bottom and I'm also gonna paint the path a little bit so you can see how to add shadows. But again, for the base layer, no need to be too detailed. You just wanna block out the color. And again, darker green is blue and yellow. And then I'm adding more and more yellow as I go on top. Also. I just realized that my phone <laughs> is on the screen. So I was playing random YouTube videos. Well, not random, I chose that video. And yeah, it was just my background sound as I was enjoying my time painting. So hope this is not distracting you. But anyway, back to the painting. As I go up, I am adding more yellow and then blending the colors. And as you can see, it doesn't have to be too detailed. And I am going back and forth with adding the darker green color, which has a lot of brown mixed to it. But I am making it darker so that I could make my detailed grass of strands stick out more later. I feel like I can't talk today for some reason and of course it's the day I decide to explain a whole tutorial but it's okay I am showing a closer view this time so if you can see I was trying to explain earlier that I made the background a little bit darker because I went back and now added a lighter green more than yellow side with my pointed brush so you can see now how it's standing out more and it's standing out more I could see the specific strengths in it because the background is darker so I hope I'm making sense on explaining different variation on how you can paint this. So yeah, I hope the close-up is helping as well. And from the picture, there was a different hue of green. So now that I had finished using green on the yellow side, I am using green that's more on the blue side, but I didn't mix it with brown. So now you can still see how it's standing out in front of that darker green because the one in the back had brown mixed next to it. So this one only had blue and yellow and some white with it just to make it be able to stand out. So I'm just taking my time with it, adding the strands and then shaping it in a way that it's coming down, also going up and yeah, just having fun with it. Oh, and for this part, I'm not going to be too detailed on it. I just wanted to paint a path real quick so I could show you how to add shadows. If you ever have a painting where you have grass ending next to a path, you'll know what to do from there. So my path is brown and my grass is ending there. So when the sun is hitting on top, it will need to cast a shadow somewhere. So it will cast it right where I'm painting right now. So I use my brown and my yellow and my oak to just kind of loosely shape out some shadows that the grass will have on it. and just gonna blend it down there just to show that this is where the path and the grass are meeting and it's in the shadow because the sun isn't getting that area. And of course, knowing me, I wanted to keep adding more and more detail. So you can see that I did take out some black to be able to get the color to pop out even more. And like I said, this is art. This is how you want to blend the colors, how you want to have fun with it. I have a specific set of rules but you can tweak it to your liking. So as you can see, I wanted to add some more details on the darker side. So I use a little bit of the black and mix it with the green that I had just to add the details of the strands in between. And yeah, just complete the look from there.
oh, did I say that I was done? Apparently not. <laughs> I guess I wanted to make this grass be detailed, I guess. So I went back and mixed some more white with my green just to make it pop out even more. So this is gonna be my most detailed grass that I ever will do. So yeah, you can see me taking my time doing one strand at a time. And I hope you like how it turned out. Okay, so now that we have our knowledge on how to mix colors, how we can work with layers, and also how you can tweak my own rule, let's get into painting something different, but also implementing what we learned from the past. I don't know how my camera didn't capture me painting the base layer, but I'm basically using an older painting that I did in my old sketchbook. And to get started, I actually just added a light wash of yellow mixed with a little bit of blue just to get that base layer that is more bright. There's a lot of sun hitting it. And then slowly I'm starting to build up the different shades in it. So yeah, I am working on the path just to kind of show how the grass are gonna work with the path but I'm not gonna put as much details as much I'm gonna show for the grass itself So for the path, I'm adding a base layer of light brown in it and I'm, I'm starting to add the shadows already where the grass would be casting shadows on it and also shape out the direction of the path too. So I'm just quickly going over adding some details in it and I will move on to painting the grass. Alright, so this painting is a little bit different from what we did before, but I did want to add it in this tutorial so you understand how to go about this. I know it can be a little bit overwhelming when you have a huge painting and huge in terms of like you're seeing it from far. This grass is being seen from a point of view that's very far. So how do you add details with it? So I am looking into the painting and I see what the base layer is, which is what we already added. I already started mixing a little bit of a darker green to add in the different spots that I see it. So I'm not detailed yet. As you can see, my background is not detailed. I don't have to burn it too much. It's fine because we're gonna add some more layers in the end. And I'm starting out by adding the darker areas around the path because that's what's being shown as dark in the picture. So just follow along the picture that you're looking, go over and understand where the sun is hitting, where the shadow's at and try to block that out. And that should be able to help you in making this painting less overwhelming.
as I'm working on the shadows itself, uh, I hope that you can notice that the top shadow is actually more of a green that's mixed with the brown and that's coming from the picture. The grass must be a different hue over there. And then the one that I'm working on right now that's closer to the bottom part is more of a green that doesn't have as much brown in it. So it kind of created a different sense of what kind of grass. It makes it more, look more real. So that's why I say sometimes it's good to make your own green rather than use the green that's given in your palette. So these shadows is being cast by the grass, the way the sun is hitting it at an angle. And yeah, I'm just gonna follow along what the picture has. And hopefully you understood when I'm saying the angle the sun is hitting at. So right now, because of the way you're looking at the shadow, the angle of the sun light hitting it is actually coming of, I was gonna say northeast. I think it's northeast. I'm gonna draw an arrow to point out where the sun is hitting it and that's where the shadow is going at right now. And I hope that I'm not being too confusing because I'm not the best with words. So yeah, just follow along with what my hands are doing. They will show better than my voice. But yeah, so now I'm moving on to adding some more shadows of where I see in the corner where it must be an elevated land. And that's where the shadow is being cast because higher ground, now it's hiding sun from hitting the part that's being blocked by the elevation. So yeah, I'm just going there with my brush and kind of adding the details of the darker looking grass and yeah mixing the colors with them And so far as I'm adding the shaded areas, I am not being too details because details will come later as I take out my opponent brush. But right now I'm just kind of blocking out where shadow is at, where light color is at and creating that difference. And then I will go later to add the details. But as you can see, I am just adding what I'm seeing from the picture. Again, it's probably an elevated place and that's why it's darker there. And I will slowly also blend it out just a little bit, but not too much because you still want some brush strokes. But yeah, just follow along with what I'm doing and I hope that me putting it at a normal speed you can just look at what I'm doing also and follow along as well. So I am starting to block out more shaded areas that I'm seeing. And again, because you're seeing it from a point of view that's far, you don't really have to add too much detail. So you're seeing it kind of like you're a bird and that's the view you're seeing. So you won't see as much details when you're that far. Um, we will add details later, but I just want to point it out now so you, you don't have to stress yourself with painting each strand at a time. There's a way to still make it look like grass, even if you look at it from far and not 
not having to spend hours and hours of adding details so yeah just go along and start adding some more blue to your light green and then block out the area that you see is shaded in it Alright, so I feel like I'm pretty satisfied with how the base layer is looking like and you could stop here if you really wanted to. I think it's still a great painting, you still, it looks like grass. I mean, if it doesn't look like grass, let me know down below, but to me, it looks like grass. It looks like a Sir Julie painting, but we can continue on if you're up for the challenge <laughs> or if you want to keep playing with colors with me because remember we're playing with colors right now so i took out my potent brush and started adding more details of the grass and again i will not add too much details because we're seeing it from far but i still want to show that we have some grass being flicked through by the wind so i started adding a more of a darker green so it will stand out from the yellow green but not too much because we still want to show that this grass is being hit by the sun and that's why it's so light but i'm not using like a black colored green more of a lightly darker than it just to show the grass kind of standing out from our background here And just like you're noticing from before we made a darker background so our lighter strands of grass could stand out this is kind of flipping that explanation just a little bit because we have a lighter background we want to make the grass stand out by putting a darker one on it so again there's a lot of tweaks to how <laughs> things are set so yeah which is why it took me a lot of time to think about this tutorial and my tutorial is again about having fun and finding ways you enjoy painting so i give you a set of rules and you can always tweak it to yours and you will get the same effect but my tutorial is to just give you the basic knowledge for you to get started with and you can go in your own little journey and also let me know how it's going for you i read all my comments i love listening what you guys up to how it's turning out for you or if it's helpful so hope it is here <laughs> All 
all right so at this point i'm pretty sure you guys got the gist of how you usually work for the painting so there was a lot of back and forth i would add the shadows and also add brighter colors to make it pop out in the sunlight so we had blocked out this darker area earlier but closer to the pathway there was some grass slash bush that is there so this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to bring back the color of the grass and just kind of make it stand out a little bit on the side of where i had made a darker area And I know you can't really tell what color I'm trying to add in here, but I was basically using similar color from the background and just kind of blending it so that way there's not too many harsh areas. Not that there was, but I was trying to add some more details and just kind of made sure everything was flowing nicely together if you're seeing it from that far of a point of view. Alright, I hope that you enjoy watching me paint or painting along with me. Let me know what you thought about the video. I know there was a lot of talking and I really really hope the visual helped a lot. I also know that these were a bunch of studies, not really completed paintings, but I wanted to focus on how to paint the grass and then you can take this learning and make your own painting. So I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Allez, bye!